Alrighty, what is going on everybody? My name is Wolfwanger and ladies and gentlemen, today is a very exciting day because we have official images of the entire set of Lego Batman minifigures or Lego Batman movie minifigures. There are 20 in total and I cannot wait to run through all of them. Of course, as always guys, if you enjoyed this Blitz News update and you want to see more of these in the future, please consider leaving a like that is always highly appreciated. Let's go on ahead and aim for 2,000 likes. You guys seem to really enjoy the last update that I made. So I want to thank you guys so very much for that. But with all that being said, ladies and gents, let's get rock and rolling because we have 20 minifigures to look at. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, we have Glam Metal Batman and he is looking super duper stylish. I really, really like this design. I really love how inspired it is by like Kiss or something along those lines, which of course would be fitting to the whole Glam Metal. Uh, design going on, but I really really love it. I love the spiked shoulders. The guitar looks super duper sweet and the boots look really awesome as well. Then we hop right over to the Clan of the Cave Batman, which reminds me of that one episode of SpongeBob SquarePants where they travel back in time, I think, or something along those lines, and we see the Barbarian SpongeBob. So I don't know why that figure reminds me of that. Plus, it also kind of reminds me a little bit of Scarecrow for some odd reason because of all the brown and the stitching on the mask. It kind of looks like a uh, Scarecrow inspired look as as well but the rest of the outfit actually does look pretty awesome and I'm looking forward to see if it makes an appearance in the film itself speaking of making an appearance in the film itself though we move right along to the lobster loving Batman and we know that this thing makes an appearance in the film itself because hey we've seen it in the trailer when he warms up in the microwave the uh, lobster so we know that this is a figure straight out of a scene from the film I love that that is super duper cool I love how he's wearing a robe but then still wearing the Batman mask that's really cool and I can't I can't wait to see how many hilarious scenes we see in the film itself. Then we hop right over to the vacation Batman, which I assume is going to be what Batman is going to be going on after battling all these baddies that he has in the Lego Batman movie. But this is the vacation Batman. I think that this figure is awesome. I love the goggles. I also really love the inflatable duck that it looks to have Nightwing's mask on it. So that looks pretty hilarious. I love that Batman can't even have unbranded uh, inflatable toys. He's like, you know what? If it's anything that I'm going to use, it's going to be the bat inflated duck. It's not going to be just an inflated duck. So he has to brand everything. So you got to love that. Now, this next one is the one that kind of made me go like, hmm, I wonder how this happens in the movie because that would be pretty hilarious. And that is the fairy Batman, which looks super duper ridiculously awesome. It is pretty much kind of a, almost like a ballerina outfitted uh, slash Tinkerbell maybe inspired look for Batman, which looks hilarious. I love the pink helmet. I love the pink wings and everything. So I'm looking forward to see how exactly does Batman become a fairy in the Lego Batman movie. So now let's hop on over to some of the baddies that we have in the set itself. And we have Catman here doing his best Wolverine impression. I really love the claws. They look awesome. I really hope that they are chrome because they look like they're chrome. They don't look like they're just uh, the uh, kind of dark gray piece that they would typically use. So I hope they actually are chrome because they look fantastic. Love Love the open uh, mask that they use, uh, kind of the Batman mask, but with the open mouth uh, at the bottom. So that looks cool. Plus the short ears work really, really well for this. And the belt that he has uh, on his uh, figure looks really nice as well. Then let's hop on over to King Tut, who's looking really hot, right? Am I right? No, he doesn't. He probably is my least favorite figure out of the entire bunch. Uh, I feel like his expression right there on his face is my feeling about this figure. I'm just like, yeah, cool, he's there. <laughs> so that's literally the only figure that I wasn't particularly a big fan of because he doesn't look all that unique in terms of just like, like if I said the words King Tut, this is kind of what would come to mind, right? Whereas if I said Catman, maybe it wasn't that look that you saw just a moment ago that would have come to mind. So I just think that it's a little bit too obvious of a design. I wish they would have done something uh, over the top with this figure, just like they have with many of the other figures in the wave. But then let's hop on over to the Joker, or more specifically the Arkham Asylum Joker. So this is a very cool minifigure. I don't think that this is the exact same one that comes with the Arkham Asylum set. I hope not because it would be kind of bad if they double dipped. I wish that their figures would be unique to each set. So I'm hopeful that this is a unique minifigure. But then again, I also understand that, hey, if you want an Arkham Asylum Joker and you can't afford or don't want to buy, let's say the ginormous, very expensive Arkham Asylum set, 
this would be a really nice way of being able to let people own the Arkham Asylum Joker without having them buy the very expensive set. So I actually think that this is pretty fair, since he only seems to appear in that really expensive set otherwise. So, really cool. Also comes with the handcuff accessory, it looks like, so that's kind of cool as well. Alright, then we move on to some of the more obscure characters, and wait till you see all the obscure characters in this set, because there are a ton of them, and it's honestly going to blow you away as to just how many there are. Like, I was genuinely shocked by how many cool, unique villains they have in this set. We have March Harriet, which uh, is a pretty cool looking uh, bunny kind of inspired character, obviously. I really like the design. I love the accessory. It looks cool. That kind of like old school Tommy gun almost like uh, look going on for it. And it, she seems to also have some printing on the wrists as well. So that's really cool attention to detail there for the March Harriet minifig. Then we move on to one of my personal favorites in this entire set, and that is Red Hood. This figure looks insanely cool. It is probably, I have to say, might very well be my favorite figure in this set. There's one other figure that I really, really love as well. I mean, I think that the entire set is awesome. This is probably the, not probably, in my opinion, the best minifigure set that they've done to date. Uh, but Red Hood looks incredibly cool. I wish we would have got a Red Hood, like, modern design as well, you know, where he's uh, the Red Hood and the Outlaws, like the one with the kind of leather jacket and such. That could be really neat as well. But honestly, if this is the Red Hood that we see in the film, and even if it isn't, this is a beautiful minifigure. It's one of the best detailed minifigures that we have gotten. It looks super duper cool. The entire dome and shoulder piece and cape assembly just works so very well at representing Red Hood. So I absolutely love and adore the way that this thing looks already. Then we move on to the Pink Power Batgirl, which was a bit of a surprise because when I saw this at first, I was like, wait a minute, does she become a lantern in the actual uh, film? Like, does she, do we see the Green Lanterns appear in some way? Because I thought that she would be uh, the pink lanterns right so i was like wait a minute is she becoming a lantern inspired character but i don't think that that is the case because a we do not see any type of power ring or anything like that so i'm guessing that this is just some sort of a pink power that she gains in the film or something that is inspired by in the in a scene from the film so i guess time will tell we don't really have any context as to what exactly this look is inspired by but it certainly does look cool and i totally could see the pink power batgirl and the fairy batman teaming up and that making for a really cool moment in the movie. Then we hop on over to Dick Grayson and he comes with shark repellent. How cool is that? A little bit of a nod to the 1960s Batman where Batman used to use shark repellent to deal with sharks. So that is really, really awesome. I love the actual print work on the sweater and the jeans. They look great. So if you get duplicates, those will be useful for any and many other customs. So that's really cool. And then of course, those goggly googly eyes look absolutely incredible. And the really cool new hair piece right there looking quite awesome as well. Then we hop on over to the Zodiac Master. Yes, the Zodiac Master is getting his own minifigure. How awesome is that? That is super duper incredible. He comes along with a fish and a crab, it seems like, as his two accessories. Some really cool, like, hieroglyphic uh, hiero hieroglyphics. Gri I can't say that word. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, printed on his body, which looks super duper nice. And he's got the big Z across his forehead as well, so that is really neat. Some cool print work as far as his expression as well, so that looks super duper awesome. Then we move on to the other minifigure that I think might be my favorite. It's really a tie between this one and the Red Hood, and that is the Nurse Harley Queen. It looks awesome. This figure is incredible. First of all, that hair piece is awesome so awesome. She even has a little nurse hat as well. I love that she comes along with an Arkham Asylum, um, basically, I guess, like, health sheet or something along those lines, and I love how it has the little H and J on it, like Harley and Joker, uh, and a little love heart. So really cool attention to detail with the pink gloves and the gloves being uh, basically printed on halfway up the sleeve of the character. The boots look awesome. There's a little bit of a separation between the boots and the pants. Like, that is some really incredibly good attention to detail with this figure. And I'm very hopeful that many of these figures, the ones that are wearing hair pieces or helmets, also have additional expressions around their heads. So, like, if we rotate the Nurse Harley Quinn here, maybe we have another expression on the other side as well, which would be really super duper cool. And another thing is, who do you guys think is underneath 
beat that red hood. That could be kind of a cool surprise, couldn't it? Well, let's move right along to the calculator, who is, yep, getting his own minifigure and looks awesome. I love the helmet. I love the print work up there of, I guess, the results that he's calculating. I love the purple that they're using for this figure. It looks really, really nice. And overall, again, a fantastic addition to this already great squad and roster of characters. Then let's move right along to another minifigure that I think a lot of people are kind of skimping over just because there are so many cool Batman and Bat villains in this set, and that is the Commissioner Gordon figure. This figure looks awesome. Look at the print work on the chest, on the arms, and he even has the little badge, uh, badge sorry, hanging down on his belt. That's really cool attention to detail. He comes with a wanted Joker poster and a walkie-talkie to communicate, of course, with the rest of the GCPD. So that is super duper awesome. A really great, great minifigure here for Commissioner Gordon. Then we hop on over to another really obscure character, and that is the Eraser, who seems to come along with a The Eraser essay that seems to be blank. I guess he was erasing everything that he has written. I love the kind of old school, almost like tuxedo, banana tuxedo design that he has going on. It looks super duper awesome. The headpiece is really great, and, and they totally pulled off the idea of him looking like a pencil, which is super duper awesome and very, very obscure but at the same time, really cool to see. Then we have the uh, police officer, Barbara Gordon. I think that that's what they're calling it, but it might be just Barbara Gordon uh, that they are going with. I love that she comes with a little bat signal. Uh, the outfit itself is pretty simplistic, but I think it works and it's unique to the GCPD. So that's really cool in terms of you'll be able to army build using these torsos and then have a whole bunch of GCPD officers. So that could be really, really cool. And she also seems to come with a handcuff piece. And I think that that hat might be able to come off, but I think that it probably is connected to the hair piece itself. So uh, that's going to be a unique piece, which is super duper cool. Then let's move right along to another one of the obscure villains in this set. And that is the mime character who comes along with the cool electric uh, shock elements that we've seen with Electro before. I don't remember if any other characters have recently had this exact same uh, accessory, but it seems like uh, a pretty common accessory overall. I love the mohawk and the uh, face paint. It looks really cool so that's definitely quite neat and again getting an obscure character such as the mime is super duper awesome and last but certainly not least we saved the best for last at least somewhat and that is orca without intent i honestly did not intend for orca to be the last figure that we look at but orca looks awesome this is obviously a rehash of the shark suit guy that they've released not that long ago in the lego minifigures line but repainted into black and obviously made to look more like an orca inspired look i love the red eye on the actual uh, shark it looks really great the uh, face itself that they have uh, or the head that they have on the inside of the mouth of the orca looks awesome as well and again just a really, really cool, obscure character to be added here into this wave. So with all that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, the ball is now in your court. I want to hear from you guys. What was your favorite figure in the set? Actually, let me know your top three down in the comment section below. I cannot wait for these minifigures to be out. As soon as they are, I'm going to try to do my best to get as many as I possibly can. This might be the first time ever that I actually considered to get like a whole box of figures because I honestly would not mind to own duplicates of any of these figures, even triplicates that's not a word but <laughs> own multiples of these figures no matter what because that would be super duper awesome nonetheless thank you guys so very much for watching today's blitz news update if you guys enjoyed it please consider dropping a like that is always highly appreciated i know that this list was revealed actually two days ago well no one day ago was when it was rumored and then we saw the actual reveal but i wanted to uh, wait until we got like official images so that i could make a more comprehensive video so i hope that that make sense as to why I didn't report on it right away. Thanks all for watching though. I appreciate you guys a ton. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you guys later. Alligators. Bye bye everyone.